Hi everyone, I'm Benjamin Yang. If you're new to this channel, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. If you're new, I make videos based on my experience as a biology tutor, and I hope that my videos will be able to satisfy your curiosity appetite, whether you're young or old. And with that, let's dive right in. In the past, I focused on beam therapeutics and its base editing technology. And that was a result of research led by Professor David Liu and his team of brilliant scientists. Recently, one of you brought to my attention that there's a new technology that was reported by David Liu and his team called Prime Editing. In this video, I'll describe what is Prime Editing, its potential users, and if you stay till the end of this video, I'll share my thoughts of the technology and compare it to base editing. Once again, I'd like to let everyone know that I'm still holding on to a very small position in beam therapeutics whose products utilizes the base editing technology. And this video is only simplifying the science. Because the approach is purely academic, this is in no way a coercion to invest. I have already made it clear in previous videos that I love base editing. The approach is very elegant since one can design the guide RNA to recognize the target sequence with the mutation, followed by the engineered CRISPR-Cas enzyme correcting the base. Then initiate a single strand break, which is safer, and finally letting the cell do its own correction. However, in the bigger scheme of genetic diseases, the mutations that can be corrected by this technique only represents a spectrum of the entire family. Specifically, it focuses on monogenic diseases that arise due to substitution mutations. So, what are substitution mutations? This occurs during the DNA replication phase of a cell cycle where errors can potentially arise in which an original base is swapped out with another. If this occurs in the exon of a gene, this can cause the original amino acid to be replaced by another. Amino acid sequences are important. In cases where the genetic diseases arise, this is because the new amino acid caused the protein to deviate from the original conformation, resulting in a loss of function and hence disease. As you can see, restoring back to the original by base editing completely and utterly cures the genetic disease. However, there are other types of mutations. Let me take you through Genetic Mutations 101. Mutations are generally grouped into small and large mutations. Small mutations involve a few nucleotides within the exon sequences in most cases and are typically less than 100 of them. Large mutations, in contrast, involve more than 100 generally. In fact, they are so large that it can involve parts or even the entire chromosome, which we term as chromosomal aberrations. We will talk about this in future as I cover BNGO stock and other sequencing technologies. Within the small group of mutations, besides the substitution mutations that I mentioned earlier, there are also insertions and deletion mutations. Insertion mutations occur when nucleotides that are not supposed to be present are added into the DNA sequence during replication. When deletion mutation occurs, nucleotides that are present are removed by random chance during replication. As you can see, in both situations, base editing will not help. So this is where prime editing comes in to solve the remainder small mutations that cannot be solved by base editing. So what is prime editing? This involves the same basis of CRISPR-Cas system but is modified to enable the insertion and deletion mutation corrections. First, the guide RNA is now lengthened. Not only does it contain the mutated target recognition sequences, it also contains the correction sequence. The whole thing is now referred to as prime editing guide RNA. The Cas enzyme domains are also modified like in the case of base editing mentioned previously, such that only one strand is cut. Finally, instead of the base editing domain, it is swapped out by an enzyme domain with a reverse transcriptase activity. What the reverse transcriptase activity do is to use the corrected sequence of the PAC RNA 
as a template to synthesize a corresponding stretch of DNA strand. When this occurs, the newly synthesized stretch of DNA will bond to the untouched original strand whilst also creating a flat which the stretch of new DNA is supposed to replace. The flat will be cut out since it is an unnatural DNA structure. However, the new stretch of DNA contains correct DNA sequence and the other stretch does not. Hence, the two DNA strands are not perfectly aligned and are mismatched. This will be repaired by the cellular enzymes that can recognize this type of misalignment. Chances are that the repair mechanism uses the corrected sequence to create a corresponding strand in the process and thereby removing the erroneous deletion or insertion of nucleotides. For now, prime editing remains a laboratory project that needs to be further tested and refined. It is a complementary technology to base editing that seeks to solve monogenic diseases caused by small mutations. It is not to replace base editing. And for those of you who are invested in beam therapeutics, Hold on to your horses and do not panic over your positions. Whilst prime editing is also elegant in the way it deals with corrections, there are more steps involved and this can be a double-edged sword, particularly the reverse transcription enzyme domain. The main challenge is to optimize it to the point where the new stretch of DNA synthesized is accurate and as intended. This particular step is itself error-prone. HIV also have this particular enzyme which converts the HIV RNA genome into DNA. However, the enzyme is highly error prone resulting in variations from the original HIV genome. This gives HIV an edge since the result of such variations allows for it to dodge the immune system thereby persisting in the infected patient. However, if the reverse transcription introduces more mutations in a patient with monogenic disease, this would defeat the purpose of CRISPR-Cas therapy. In addition, the PAC RNA is a longer version than before. The recombinant Cas enzyme is also much bigger because of the new enzyme domain being added. This would mean that the overall size increases and making it more difficult to bring it into the target cell. Let me know in the comment section below if you'd like me to explain it. The two reasons are why I think that prime editing is not ready for prime time. And with that, I thank you for staying with me till the end of this video. You've been awesome and I'm Benjamin Young. See you in the next video.